Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Oh boy, I'm exhausted already and I haven't even started yet, but I'm just surveying this territory down here. Now, it is an extremely hot night here in the middle of the Australian summer. And the first question you're going to be asking me is why on earth am I rugged up with a jumper and my bag and everything else? It's to keep the mosquitoes off me. They are killing me in my arms. I've sprayed myself. Um, <clears throat> there's bugs everywhere and the more lights I turn on, the more bugs come back. So anyway, look, I've just been down by the lake. Um, I've decided to do a bit of an artistic photo shoot today. And I've got with me my Nikon 85mm f1.8 S lens, which is a Nikon Z mount. And I haven't used that lens at all. It's a new one. I've actually traded in all my older lenses. So I'm gradually upgrading to all of the native Z lenses. And uh, look, if it's, if it's anything like all my other Z lenses, the 20, the 35, the 50, and I've got a 24 to 70. It's fantastic. They are all great lenses. But as you well know, 85 millimeter is a little bit more difficult lens to fit into the workflow. So that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm doing one of my favorite things. I know you're gonna laugh at me again. I'm doing selfies. So I'm standing on a rock down there and what I'm trying to do is get my tripod right down low to the ground, facing up into the sky and Best if I just take you down there and show you. Let's go. Okay, so what I've done, I'll put my camera here, low down as you can see. So it's about 400 millimeters off the ground and I'm shooting down there towards a rock. You'll see down there, there's a, some, some sort of grass there and a rock, that's where I'm gonna be standing. And so I've put my camera into portrait orientation. Now remember it's an 85 millimeter. So being an 85 millimeter lens, um, I've got to get back a fair way from the subject. So I'm back probably about, I don't know, maybe eight meters back from the subject. But of course, what I'm going to be doing here is shooting wide open apertures. I'm gonna be shooting this at F1.8 five second shutter speeds at ISO 3200. I reckon that should work okay. And what I'm actually aiming for here is, as I said before, is a little bit of an artistic look about the images. And so what I'm asking the camera to do by opening it up wide to f1.8, I'm gonna make those stars turn into bokery out of focus. And I've actually focused onto that rock just down there, which is where I'm gonna be standing. And so, um, that's the plan anyway. It's never easy when you use yourself as the model. If I had someone else here being the model, uh, I could just sit behind the camera here to be a piece of cake, so much easier. But the key for this shot is that I'm going to be using flashes to light the subject. Now, the reason I'm doing that, and, and I've got two, and I'll show you those in a minute. And the reason I'm doing that is to make sure that the subject, and in this case, the subject is me, but it's not just me. It's also the rock and a little bit of the foreground down here. Now, the foreground here closer to the camera, if there's any foreground in the shot, just here, then that will fall out of focus. Because remember, I'm shooting wide open at f1.8. And so I'm after an artistic look here. This is more of a portrait style. Now look, we're not uh, looking for Hollywood shots here because let's face it, it's me that's the model, but that's what I'm doing. Now, the other thing I'm doing, you'll notice I've got remote triggers here. There's one down here on the camera to actually trigger the camera. And there's one up here on the hot shoe, which is going to trigger the flashes. And I've got another one in my hand here. Hopefully you can see that, which is the Yongnuo RF603s, which I use. They're all the same. I've got some Yongnuo flashes, but look, what if I go and show you the flashes? Let's go. Okay, so here we go. We've got the first of my flashes. Now, where, just to set you up a bit here, the camera is just over there. And it's probably about four meters from this flash. Where I'm gonna be standing is just over there on this angle. So it's at about a 60 degree angle from the camera. And that's probably 
I'd say about eight meters away from the subject. So um, this is on its lowest possible setting. So this is the Yongnuo YN720. It's got a built-in flash uh, receiver built into it. So it just fires when the camera tells it to. I've got these set to rear curtain sync. Now I've talked to you a lot about rear curtain sync before. Essentially what that means is that the flash will fire at the end of the exposures. In this case, it's five second shutter speeds. So what I'm doing is I'm triggering the camera. It counts down one, two, three, four, five, flash, just as the shutter is closing. And this, the, the role of this light is just to give it a little slight bit of light on the side of the subject. Now, you don't necessarily have to do that, but in this case, I just wanted to give a little bit more definition to the front. You know, there's a lot of ways you can do this, but I've got another light, which is down a bit further. I'll show you that now. It's exactly the same brand of light. It's exactly the same settings. It's on a very low setting, so it's about 1 32nd. The other thing I've got on these lights is a grid so that that contains the light even more. So these are, I've got the MagMod magnets on them so that I can just quickly put the grids on and off. You can see them there. It's just a um, honeycomb grid, just sticks on there with a magnet, really easy to, to work with. Um, and the other one's the same. Now the other one does a different job. So let's check that one out. Okay, here we are. Now this is um, the main backlight flash. So the subject, where I'm gonna be standing is there. It's about six meters from the camera. Now this is exactly in line with where the camera is. So I've got to make sure that this flash when it fires is actually hidden from view of the camera. I mean, I want to see the effect that it makes. I want to see all of the, um, you know, the, the, the backlighting of the grasses and the rocks and the backlighting of the subject, but I certainly don't want to see the flash fire because that'll destroy the image. And you can see a couple of images I took as test shots uh, where that's actually happened. So once again, this has the, uh, the mag grid. So you can see it there. That's just a grid that stops the flash from being too bright. It's just got magnets on it, fits there beautifully. Turn it on and you'll see um, it'll go into, uh, there it is, the red light's flashing, which means it's into wireless flash mode. Uh, and it's looking for a signal to trigger the flash. I've got that set to 1 32nd power, which is as low as it goes, and it's got a grid on as well. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how do you know which power levels to shoot these flashes at? Um, to be honest, it's trial and error. It's like a lot of things with nightscape photography, it's trial and error. I don't know, I can't tell you exactly, but I do know that when you've got your ISO pumped up, you, you aperture's wide open, then you need to have your flash power very, very low. One thing about flash, whenever you're using flash photography, and this uh, is the same for daytime photography or nighttime or studio, it doesn't matter. The shutter speed is absolutely irrelevant. Now, I'm using a five second shutter speed. It makes no difference to the flash. I could have it at 10 seconds, 20 seconds. I could have it at half a second. I could have it at one second. It makes no difference because the flash only fires like that. So it's only firing. Oh, go away, mosquitoes. Man, man, it's only firing for that split second, but the aperture and the ISO makes a huge difference to the effect that that flash has on the final image. Okay, so this is a style of photography that I have done a fair bit of in the past, and I'll show you some of those images now. And most of the time I'm using a little bit longer focal length lenses when I do this, whether it be perhaps 35, 50 mil, or in this case, 85 millimeter focal lengths. And I think the reason that works better is because you can get more out of focus, that bokeh look in the background stars. And I think you'll agree with me that it's something a little bit different, a little bit more unusual compared to some of the nightscape images that you'll see all around the place. Okay, so this bit is actually quite tricky because this is the bit where I've got to stand up here on this rock and I don't know if you can see that, but it's not very secure. So, oh, what a view though. Man, this is fantastic. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> I'm getting carried away there. Um, the camera's back down there. 
first flash is down here second flash is over this side and uh, I've got my trigger in my pocket so here we are I've got it in my hand here I've got to somehow put my hand somewhere where I can't see necessarily what's going on with that trigger because it's got a little uh, green light on it but I just stand here as still as I can click the button and off we go Okay, well here we are, back at the camera, and I'm hoping the pictures look all right. Not too bad. So, let me just comfortable here. Oh boy, I'm exhausted. This, this, the heat is really getting to me, and the bugs are really, really getting to me. So this is gonna be a short video. I haven't got time to do too much else because I've got to go and get a drink out of the car. But every time I turn the lights on, the bugs come back. So I've got to get this jumper off, but I can't do that safely until I get back safely in the car. Anyway, I'm going to show you the image now. Hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, as much as I have being out here, you know, even though I'm getting attacked by a thousand mosquitoes and it's about 35 degrees in the shade here, I'm still loving being out here because there's a gorgeous view of the stars up there. That's the Southern Cross there, by the way. And there's a lake out here. You probably haven't seen the lake, but there's a lake in the background. Nice and calm. So you get these gorgeous nights where it's calm out here. They're worth their weight in gold. I just wish it was about 10 degrees colder. But anyway, I'm going to grab something to eat and grab something to drink. I'll see you guys later. You can check the image out here. All the best. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a comment down below. See if you like this type of content. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.